So how did how did we land here? Ne? Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Wait, wait, wait. Let me tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Listen, I'll tell you. Ne? Sharp. Oh, oh, let me tell you. So what had happened was beautiful people welcome back to my channel I'm Kapana Shimange and this is how I do things the show where you send me your questions and I'll let you know how I would do things now I can take it as advice use it don't use it it is completely up to you now it's a challenge a Tuesday and I'm about to let you know what I would do if I was in your shoes I'm not a professional not at all so if you want to seek some financial advice head over to your financial advisor and they will give it to you now today we're talking about a topic that isn't that popular but it's one of the best strategies that I I have seen someone can take a step back and take a giant leap forward in life and I've seen it happen over and over and over again now let me tell you what happened to me in 2012 I was working I'd been living in Joburg for some time and things weren't going as I thought they would work was it was eating me up inside to be honest with you being employed was it, it wasn't working for me at the time and honestly it was killing me inside it really was and personally from a personal life things were just a mess partying going out but feeling completely empty i wanted to just hide and just wait for everything to be solved and come out when the world was better again but that's not how the world works right so i moved back home the first opportunity that i got to pack my bags and go I did it. I packed everything. I got in my car and I left. When my paycheck came, I was just like, <laughs> out. And I went back home for a full year. I didn't tell my parents what was going on. I just arrived and we lived. But that year was the year I made the greatest strides in my life. Personally, financially and mentally, the best things happened for me from a career point of view. I took one step back and I took a giant leap forward in my life. And I've seen that happen for so many people. Now, when it comes to the topic of moving back home, a lot of people are just like, I am, I'm just too old for this. I'm too, I'm too old for this. I can't do that. That's for children. I am way too old for that. Shh. That may be the case and it may be something that you think about, but I don't necessarily think so. I've seen people in their 30s, in their 40s with their many families moving back in with their sisters, their brothers and their parents, taking a step back from the financial responsibilities that they have from living as an independent unit and taking a load off for a year or two. And from that, making giant strides forward. Now you may think to yourself, I would never do that. But hold on for that just a little bit. Now I got this question from somebody on Instagram. She sent me the question. She looked for this picture right here, at Kopana Shimange. It's on my Instagram highlights. Reply and let me know what question or scenario you want me to talk about in our next video. Whether it is about being a woman, self-love, self-care, being a mommy, being a boss, or being that girl. Then let me know what you want me to talk about in our next video. But for this one, can you move home to set yourself up financially? Here are a few things that you can do and maybe a few things you need to think about if you ever consider taking a step back, moving back home to level up financially. Number one is that you want to assess your life and your finances and find out what is the bigger goal. Why are you moving back home? Are you moving back home because you're just tired and you need to fix yourself? Good. Are you moving back home so you can fix your debt, right? Are you moving back home so you can save some money so you can use that money for something else? That's usually what a lot of people do. They look at their lives, they look at their finances, they look at their costs and they think to themselves, I'd save so much money if I moved back home. So why do you want to save that money? What is the goal that you're trying to achieve by moving back home? There's no use just packing your bags and shipping off and getting there when you could use that time to build yourself. Yes, taking a step backwards can really help to anchor you so that you can take a giant leap forward. But that won't happen if you don't have a plan, if you don't know what it is that you're going back home for. So think about it. When you look at your financial situation, it's not just about saving your money. That can't be the goal. What are you going to do with it? Are you saving it to invest? Are you saving it so that you can buy a house? Are you saving it so that you can pay off your debts? What is the bigger goal? 
Yes, there'll be things that you will save along the way, but what is the ultimate goal for you moving back home? Number two, calculate the financial implications of moving back home. Now this is simple, right? Let's just say you're earning 10,000 Rand a month and you pay about 3,000 Rand for your rent and you're paying 1,002 for your car and another 1,000 Rand for your insurance. When you move back home, you're saving on your rent. So 3,000 Rand goes into your pocket. You're saving on your groceries because now you're towing your mommy and your daddy's groceries, right? So you're saving on that as well, which can be about 2,000 Rand per month. So you've got an extra 5,000 Rand that you won't be allocating to those expenses because you're moving back home. But here's the thing. Moving back home may be a very selfish move if you do not take into consideration the people that you're living with. When you move back home, think about the ways that you are actually going to contribute to the house. Are your parents going to expect you to make a monthly contribution, whether it is in the form of rent or buying the groceries or filling up the tank every single month with petrol? What is it that you can actually contribute and what can you afford? The biggest thing here is not to take away the 5,000 Rand in expenses and just plunge it back into something when you move back home. There needs to be a saving that you make. So you need to know beforehand, what are the parameters that you're working with here? Yes, you're saving 5,000 Rand, but maybe you'll have to contribute 1,000 or 2,000 Rand when you get back to your parents' house. So calculate that and find out, okay, fine, how can I contribute to this house? And remember, contributions aren't just in the form of money, but they can also be in the form of time. So look at all of the financial implications. How far are you going to be from your workplace? Do you have to maybe quit your job to move back home? What are the whole financial implications of moving back home? From the benefits in terms of what you will save, but also from the cost point of view in terms of do you have to drive a little further to go to work? Do you have to give up on a few things that you are working on right now? Calculate all of those things and know those things beforehand before moving back home. Number three, what will you do with your savings? Now I know a girl who moved back home in her late 20s, right? She's almost 30 years old. And when she moved back home before, she had her own house, she had her own car, she was renting at the time, and she wanted to start her own business. So she moved back home so that she can focus on that business. So the money that she was paying for rent, she got rid of that. But she also downgraded her car when she moved back home. So she saved a whole lot of money. Basically all her expenses that she had were decreased by about 80% by moving back home. With those savings, she used that to start her business and every single piece of profit that she made from her business, she saved it. She has now paid for a house. She's put a nice huge deposit for her house. She also bought a car and she's planning to move out by the end of the year. This is after two years of moving back home. She had a plan. She knew that I'm stepping back so that I can have no financial risk instead of in terms of starting my business. Sometimes you may have your bills that you need to pay and moving back home will get rid of those bills that you are worried about. Moving back home will mean that you don't have to worry about the rent. You don't have to worry about the lights and electricity. You don't have to worry, worry about the same car bills that you had. So you can focus on building that business. And if you're going to focus like a nine to five on building that business when you move back home, there's no way that you can not succeed after a year of dedicated Monday to Friday, nine to five work on that business. What are the reasons that you are moving back home? And what are you going to do with your savings? There has to be an ultimate plan and an ultimate thing that you want to do with it. So from the first month that you receive those savings, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to set up a debit order? Are you going to set up an investment? Are you going to set up maybe a savings account? Are you going to pay towards a bigger lump sum that you want to pay off? From month one, you need to have a plan for that money not just in your head, but you actually have to put triggers in place to move that money as and when you need it to. The best thing that you can do for yourself is set up the triggers beforehand. Don't just say, I'll save the money and once it's in my account, I'll see what I do with it because you'll spend it and it will be a complete waste moving back home. So set up triggers set up debit orders, make sure you can decrease any money that you need to decrease, set up whatever investment accounts you need to set up to make sure that that money goes to where it's supposed to go. And who knows, if you're moving back for a year, you could end up coming back home much, much sooner. 
Number four is to set an end date. No parent wants you to be back in perpetuity. They left you to go and live your life. Yes, they are there for you to welcome you back should you need the help. Ultimately, your parents want to see you succeed, right? So when you say, listen, I'd like to come back home, mama, just for a little bit. I just need to fix a few things, ne? And then after Giri Bangaya, I will move back and I will get things going. So there must be some sort of end date. Because if you don't set an end date or a goal that will basically set the expiration date for you living there, then you may stay there forever. You may get stuck there forever. And you may get sucked back in to the old culture of where you come from. All of us, we have our old friends, we have our old habits that we had when we moved away from where we lived. And it is very easy to get settled right back into it and get stuck. Never lose sight of the end goal of why you are moving back home. And having an end goal and having an end date will help you to know when it is time for you to ship up and ship out. You need to have that end goal. It is your sanity and not just yours. The last thing you want is for your parents to have to kick you out again in your mid thirties. That is embarrassing. They should be happy to see you go because you've achieved your goal. They mustn't just be tired and be like, Whoo, thank goodness. Yay. So at this point, you have looked at the end goal. What is it that you want to achieve? You've looked at the financial implications and how much you're actually going to be saving. You're going to set up all the triggers that you need in place in order to make sure you achieve your goals. And you have an end date for when it is time for you to pack your things and go. Number five is to get onto the same page with your mama. Call her and just be like, Mamo, hi. So, yeah, I need to move back home, hey? I'm thinking about it. You know, it's your house. It's your house. You need to do so respectfully. And listen, no matter how much of a grown-up you are, your parents still have more experience than you do. So before even making the final decision, call them up and get on the same page. There is some sort of advice and some clarity that they can offer to you. For all you know, they may be like, listen, come back home. You don't need to contribute anything. It is not a take, take, take situation when you become an adult and you need your parents help. If you can help them back, do it. So call them up and get on the same page. There may be some pros and some cons that they can help you out with. But because you took some time to think about the pros and cons beforehand, you will actually be able to have a full, open and honest discussion. You are able to present to them the pros and cons. You already know your budget. So you can say that, listen, this is a budget that I've set that when I come back home, I can help out at home with 2000 Rand every single month. That goes a long way. Yes, you'll be in the house. Yes, you'll be eating their groceries and taking their food and their water and making them spend more electricity. But you'll be playing your part as well in the form of time and in the form of money. Have an agreement in terms of, do you need some time to work on the things you need to work on? Are you going to be coming back home with some furniture? And what are you going to be doing when you get back home? Getting on the same page with them will really help you to get some clarity and also get on a side where you know that you actually have someone on your side there to support you no matter what you do. Look, I've seen this happen to people of all ages, 20s, 30s, and 40s, I promise you. And for every single person, they have never regretted the decision. Now, moving back home was the best thing that I ever did for myself. And for the people that I know, it set them up, not just financially, but mentally and spiritually, they were so much stronger. They had leveled up because they removed the stresses that they had because of where they are. So think about it. Do you really need to keep that place and stay by yourself right now? Could you use the financial and the moral support of people who know you and know your superpowers? Could you use some support, not cooking for yourself every single night and have somebody else there to talk through certain ideas and talk about your life with people who understand you better than a whole lot of people do? For me, moving back home was one of the greatest things I did for myself. Not only did I take a couple steps back to set myself up, but I came back stronger from a spiritual and mental point of view. My finances were in such a good place that when I came back, I finished my degree, moved into my own place, got a job and got myself a car. That is what happened when I moved back. 
at reset not just from a money point of view but from mentality and when you're mentally in a better place that's when you can even multiply your money so even if it means that you're not going to move back home how can you set yourself up how can you take a step back in order to get the strength and the power to leap forward and level up now i hope that you guys enjoyed this one and i hope that it works out for you maybe it gives you an idea of how you can actually take a step back to save and accumulate funds to move you to your next level in life that's it that we have for today on Teleta Tuesday. Give me a big thumbs up if you want more Teleta Tuesday videos and send me your questions if you have any and comment down below to let me know what you liked and what you think about today's video. Until next time, beautiful people, I'm Kopana Shimange and this is How I Do Things. Hey gorgeous, thank you so much for making it to the end of my video. I really appreciate the support. Now if you haven't gone to my website yet, here it is www.gobanishmaggie.com On that website there is a sign up where you can get financial resources that can help you to calculate where you are right now in terms of your finances and how you can plan for the future. You can actually calculate how much do you need to build the life that you dream of in your head. How do you bring that to life and how much money will it cost you. Until next week, gorgeous! I'll see you then.